went out for dinner one night with my partner at the time, and after we finished eating, they said, well, let's go play some pokies. One came out in front, and I thought, oh, this is easy. A couple of weeks later, and walked past a pokey venue and thought, oh, yeah, I'll just pop in. It's just a bit of fun. And I lost. I only meant to spend 20 or 30. I lost that and thought, no, I'll put another 20 and I'll win it back. And that's pretty much it. Once I got started, I found I just couldn't stop. I very quickly stopped enjoying it. As the money that I'd lost went up, um, my need to get that back increased with it. Um, and I guess for me, the, the greater that the, those losses got, the less able I was to tell anyone. Did I want to tell people what was going on? Absolutely I did. Um, but I was so scared of actually admitting to what I was doing. I know countless times I spent money that I had earmarked to go out for dinner or even just to buy lunch. You know, for, for, for months, I would, uh, my, my breakfast and my lunch was biscuits from the tea room and, uh, and coffee because I could get it for free. The thing that actually pushed me over the line to, to seek help was my partner at the time questioned me about money that wasn't where it should be. I stopped and within a month I was gambling again, I relapsed. At no point was I able to stop voluntarily. I had to have my hand forced every time. Sort of, I'd lost everything at that point. And it was a real sense of, you've hit rock bottom, there's, there's nowhere else you can go now. The impacts on myself from gambling, the biggest one was stress. Uh, I was carrying this enormous secret around. The way I saw myself changed significantly over a period of time. Um, I, I became very good at lying, extremely good at lying, and that scared me. There's the, the breaking of the trust, especially when you relapse and you relapse again, and you know, I, I'm, I'm sure your family members start saying, well, you know, can I trust you again? This is a statistic floating around of between seven and 10 people are impacted for every problem gambler. And, and I have no doubt that's true. I've been off the pokies for, for 11 years now, and look, for the first 10 years, I, I was sleepwalking. I guess the next step for me from that point on was accepting that I wasn't a bad person, that I wasn't some you know, monstrous person who'd done all these terrible things. I could move on from that point. I was looking around you know, for something to do that could make, possibly make a difference. And I, I started writing about it. I started getting involved in social media and, and, uh, and it's really grown from there, it's snowballed. My website, which is Cyan, um, it's essentially a blog. I write about uh, the industry, I write about gambling, and to be honest, I'm honoured that someone would come to me and say, Look, I have a problem. You know, it's something I was never able to do. You know, I have a problem, I've, I've found your site. Um, can you help? If someone's gambling at the moment, my advice would be that there is support. There are a lot of people who won't judge, and there are so many services now that can help. There is a way out. Your life doesn't stop when you, start, when, when you stop playing pokies. That's just the start of getting it back. <laughs>